Today's video is sponsored by Rios Nautical Eyewear, the industry's leader in floating sunglasses. What's up guys, it's Ryan again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Click this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now in the last two days, we have just been slammed with search and recovery dives. The holiday weekend was very, very good to us and it continues to be good to us because we're getting calls left and right about people losing things in the water and they're wanting us to recover it. Yesterday alone, I did five search and recovery dives anywhere from a drone that a gentleman had flew into the water to uh, cell phones, glasses, wallets, keys. Um, we did it and it wasn't just me, just about all of our staff was out doing search and recovery dives in our local lake and it's just been a very, very busy weekend for us. Unfortunately, we didn't get those things filmed for you just because we were getting calls left and right. However, today we have a salvage job that we're going out to do. We actually had a boat that sunk, or a house that sunk, if you will. Yeah, it's a houseboat. It's a 43-foot houseboat that went down, and it's actually at our dock, so it's one of our slip customers. But we're gonna go and get that thing salvaged for him today. Um, we're not real sure, other than it just took on too much water on why it sunk, so we've not really got to get down there yet and check the hole, see if there's any holes in it. So we're gonna be doing that today as well. But we're gonna film this entire process for you now the video may jump around a little bit simply because our main goal is to, to keep our divers safe and to get this boat up but it may jump around a little bit so if you get a little confused I will commentate through this video exactly what we're doing now I do want to state this real quick this boat we need about 18,000 pounds of lift currently we've only got 6,000 pounds of lift so we're not gonna have enough lift to pick it up however we're gonna do like Every other time in the past when we've not had enough lift, we are partnering with CETO. CETO is going to come in, they're going to provide all the hardware for us, all the bags, all the rigging, and we're simply just going to be doing the diving. Now, like any other video that we do on this, we're going to kind of be walking you through the process of what it is that we do and why we do it that way. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before we jump into it is there was no one actually on board when this boat went down. At least we're pretty confident. I'm going to say 99.9% .9 sure there was no one in it when the vessel went down. However, we are going to do a generalized sweep, not just of the area um, of the vessel. We're actually going to be penetrating the vessel as well um, because we may be able to utilize. This is a solid steel vessel. Everything is steel on it. There's no fiberglass. So we're actually going to be penetrating this thing to see for one, if there was somebody on it, and number two, if we can utilize the cabin area of this houseboat as part of our lift as well to keep it stabilized. And the reason that we're gonna have to do that is it's virtually sitting on the bottom. So I'm not sure we can get some type of belly band up underneath it to strap it onto. But that being said, I'm just about to the shop and I'll walk you out on the docks and show you the current condition of this houseboat. All right, guys, so we're here at the docks, and I am going to walk out here and show you what our job is today. Um, the good news is we don't really have to search for the houseboat. We kind of know where it's at. Uh, part of it, a small portion of it, is still protruding up out of the water. Um, because of the depth that we're at, we're looking at about 15 to 20 foot where the bow is, and then, of course, the stern's in about 30 foot, so but it's long enough that it's kind of sitting on an incline like this. So part of it is still protruding up out of the surface, but I'm gonna get out here to the end of the dock and show you what it looks like. And there we have it. There you can see the bow. And way back here is the stern. Now we do have a little bit of a fuel spill here that we've been soaking up, but we've pretty much got it contained. But the insurance adjuster's coming out. I've got my crew coming out. We're gonna have uh, a total of six divers today. We're gonna have two in the water at a time, two backup divers. Those two backup divers will become the primary. And then the next two will be the backup divers. Um, but our job, of course, is to get down to the bottom of it, see what all we need to do to get rigging done on it, and then see if we can get it raised up. Now, one of the major concerns that we have 
is I don't want to damage my dock any more than it's already been damaged. If you can see, it's kind of on a, a slant now. And the same thing over here on the other one. This boat or this vessel was tied all the way across here. And when it went down, both of these docks went down as well. And our rings actually slide up and down the pole. You can see where it kind of chewed the pole up as it went down. And it's warped. There's galvanized steel up underneath this. It completely warped the steel. So what one of the fears I've got is as we come up to raise this, the stern of the vessel is actually underneath the dock because of the way it went down. So we're going to have to be careful not to raise it up and do any more damage to the dock. So we may have a vessel out here pulling that boat out as we're trying to raise it at the same time. Uh, we're going to have compressor units and things up here with manifolds that we're running down to our bags. But it's going to be a busy day. I have no doubt we're going to have a ton of people out here watching us do this. We've already had several people come out and say, hey, can we come out and watch? And we've kind of told them, hey, stay a certain distance away. Give us room to work for safety and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely going to be a fun day. All right, so before we start this dive, as you can see, we've got everything laid out on the dock. We've got the compressor units, we've got all the bags, we've got the manifolds, um, and we're just kind of getting a game plan here together. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put four divers in the water, and we have chose to go with comms. Uh, on this particular dive just so that we can communicate with the surface. We are unsure at this time the stability of the vessel while it's in the water so we wanted the comms to be able to communicate at the surface in the event that we had an emergency. But we've done our pre-dive safety checks. We're going to go ahead and jump in and the first thing that we're going to do is a calm check. So once I go underwater you'll hear me key up and I will ask the surface if they can hear us, if we got clear communications and then they'll verify. They'll verify with each diver that's underwater to make sure their comms are working and then uh, once all verifications are made we will actually make a sweep of the vessel. Um, when we do this sweep, there's a couple of things that we're looking for. First of all, we're looking at the overall condition of the vessel. Uh, we're looking to see if there's any victims. We're looking to see what type of debris is there. Um, and we're also looking to see where the fuel or the oil is leaking from, which we've got a pretty good idea it's coming out of the engine bay or the engine compartment. We're just looking to see if there's anything that we can do to help contain that as well. But now that all comm checks are done, we're going to go ahead and start our initial inspection. Um, this is myself and the other primary diver to start with and we are literally just swimming around looking for damage in the hull, we're looking for damage of the vessel, um, looking to see if windows are knocked out. One of the things that we try to concern ourselves with is when we lift this vessel up, what are the areas that water can come back in? Are they vent holes? Are they windows? Are they doors? Um, are they uh, scupper holes? We're trying to determine what all we need to do to seal this uh, vessel off so after we lift it, we can actually start the pumping process. But here, as we're going around, the first thing that we're going to notice is there's a cutoff dock pole there. You can see the uh, Diver 2's light is shining on it. You can see that pole is actually holding the vessel up. So if you remember what it looked like at the beginning, that vessel was, even though it was sunk, it was kind of laid over. The reason is it's landed on that cutoff dock pole. And so that's actually is what's holding that vessel in that position. But we're making a note of that. We're readying up to the surface and letting them know that's why it's turned. Um, this is actually kind of a good thing because when we put straps around this vessel, we have to go up underneath it. And if it's not stable, then obviously we're not going to send a diver underneath it because if it's not stable, it could come down and crush that diver. So with it being wedged on top of that pole, that gives us room to work to get belly bands and bags and straps up underneath it. But we're just going to continue to do the inspection here um, and just see everything um, or try to get a good idea of the condition of it. We're also looking for what's called lifting points. These can be bow eyes, stern eyes, they can be cleats, anything that we can actually hook to uh, a bag or a lifting device of some type um, and not actually damage the vessel because if we damage the vessel as we're lifting it, then the bags could break free and we kind of got to start over at square one again. But that's what this first uh, part of the dive is all about is the condition of the vessel, seeing if there's any victims still inside, or to see what all lifting devices that um, or lifting connection points that we'll have. Um, here we're going into the engine bay now, and you can already see those little black specks there. That's just oil that's coming up out of that. Um, we do have um, 
absorbance up top collecting that oil but um you can kind of see it coming out there and it's kind of funny it doesn't really spill out like you see in the movies this is this engine is sealed so it's just kind of leaking off the hoses and things like that um, this vessel I believe if I remember correctly has about a 60 gallon tank of fuel uh, thankfully none of it came out there was just whatever was there you know the fumes out of the engine bay or what was on the hoses so thankfully nothing come out but uh, we check all that and then we are going to move back up to the front of the vessel or to the bow of the vessel and we're actually going to try to make entry into the cabin area. Now I do want to caution you if you're getting into this type of underwater work um, always make sure you have a clear exit um, and what before we make entry in here we're going to do what we can to make sure this door stays open. So we're actually going to lash it to the corner of the uh, cabin area so that once we do go in we will have an exit point to come back out and it won't shut behind us now thankfully the side window the port side window here was open um, for us so we can lash around the corner of the cabin and as we go in if we need to come out for whatever reason if that door was to shut we could get out that side window but just to give us an extra exit point there because there are going to be two of us inside this vessel we're actually going to lash the door open through that window as well and that's going to kind of hold everything in place and if you hear us talking back and forth we're either going to be talking uh, to ourselves to side by side or we're going to be talking to other divers or even the surface a lot of times with comm units it's easier for us just to talk back and forth with full face mask like we're wearing there's a large enough airspace that we can actually Actually talk it's a little mumbled but we can actually talk back and forth without having to key up on the comms um, kind of keeps communications down a little bit so that there's not too much traffic and people misunderstanding but we're gonna fix to make our entry here and what we're looking for in this particular uh, part of the dive is two things we're looking for victims which we already know you know about 99% chance there was no victims here everybody was off the vessel when it went down but we're still gonna make sure of that one thing that a lot of people don't understand is that when vessels go down it's a crime scene because these vessels are not meant to be in the waterway they do create hazmatic situations and at the least it's considered littering under state law so this is still a crime scene and we want to make sure that we document everything the best we can. Um, a couple of things that I'm also looking for in here, not only are victims, I'm also looking at the condition of the vessel. Was the uh, village pump turned on? Was the keys in the ignition? You know, what, what happened? So those are also things that I'm looking at as well just to get an overall uh, consensus of what we are dealing with and how we're going to get this vessel up to the surface. So if you look right there in front, you will see there's the refrigerator and there is a trash can that's kind of floating up in the cabin area. Um, I'm actually going to stop here and I'm not going to go any further back in the cabin because with this boat being leaning over the way it is, it's actually leaning over towards the starboard side of it, I don't want that refrigerator to fall as I go through it and either pin me in or block my exit point. So I'm actually going to stop where I'm at um, and just kind of note everything there. Here you can see I'm actually tying off the door so that I have a good exit point uh, and I know somebody's probably going to ask why didn't you tie it off before you went in well I kind of had to go in to get the rope through it to tie it off I did leave diver number two which is my backup there I left him outside of the vessel so he could open that door back for me but I'm going to go ahead and tie it off so that we have two clear exit points um, and then I'm going to kind of go back in and do a, another final inspection of the inside of the cabin area uh, like I said I don't want to go any further back because of the hazards in there I don't want that uh, refrigerator falling since it is tilted over um, and any debris that may come out of the trash and all that. I, I just don't want to risk anything um, because we still have on the back side of the cabin area, there's another sliding glass door that we can come in and check the bedroom out and all that, which we'll, we'll do prior to surfacing. But what I'm going to fix to look at here is the control panel and or the, the ham of the vessel, if you will. And I want to see what switches were turned on. Did, were there uh, switches that could run a battery down? Was the village on? Um, because a lot of this information or a lot of this I can use to determine why a vessel sunk as well. Um, but I'm just kind of looking. I'm actually looking at access panels here too. So once we have this boat floating or floating with the bags, I know where to put the um, 
the pumps to suck the water out. So I'm just looking up in the access areas there just to make sure that we can get pumps in. So there's a lot of things that I'm actually doing right now. I'm kind of multitasking. If this is something that you're interested in, uh, we teach a ton of public safety divers and we also teach underwater criminal investigation diving. So if this is something you're interested in, maybe you're in law enforcement or something like that, come by and check us out. We can get you involved in stuff like this and we can definitely teach you the skills that, that you need to be able to do this not only safely but uh, sufficient or efficiently as well but I'm just gonna kind of continue on with my inspection here I'm just looking at different things um, and just seeing the overall condition of the vessel and like I said I'm stopping I'm not actually going any further where, where I'm at now the fridge is right there's the fridge directly to the right and you saw the trash can floating above me I just don't want to run the risk of anything blocking my exit point back to where I'm at yes I did state that there was another sliding glass door in the back however I don't want to risk it there's no need to risk my life for an inanimate object here's the control panel you can see there's the billet switch there is the light switch courtesy light switch and uh, running lights all that you can see the accessory switches you can see the pumps um, the horn you can see the gauges there's the throttles so there's a lot of good information that I can get here that's going to help me determine you know what made this vessel go down as well the main one that I'm looking for here is the billage and when I get to it you'll see me show the other diver that the billage was turned on which is a good thing that means uh, if this vessel was to take on some type of uh, water whether it's rainwater or just collecting the water or whatnot it's going to be pumping it out um, now we did we were able at, at the end of the video we'll talk about what made this vessel sink um, and obviously taking on water is what made it sink but it took on too much water for what the village was able to pump out but like I said we document all this we're, we're gonna write it down obviously we're gonna let the owner know um, this ended up being an insurance job so insurance companies will need to know stuff like that as well so that's once again why we're documenting it for them here's another access panel this is the battery access panel here and we're just looking to see if we can get a uh, pump hose up in there uh, the pumps that we're using are uh, big three inch hose pumps so you got a three inch diameter hose and so once we have it high enough out of the water to where the gunnels are out we can really start pumping water quickly on here but we are getting very close to the end of our initial inspection. We're going to go ahead and come out of the cabin here, make one final swoop, and then we will come up and kind of relay the information to the CETO team. Uh, my father, who is running comms for us up top, um, he has comms. So he's just basically wearing a headset, and he can hear everything we're saying. But the uh, other part of the salvage team, which is CETO, they can't hear what we're saying. So we're going to come up, reconvene with them, and kind of tell them the condition that we've got, um, and then get a little bit of advice where to put the belly bands and bags and stuff like that what we're actually going to do to begin with is we're going to stabilize this vessel first and foremost and get it to where it's nice and flat so that we can run the straps all the way under it to be able to hook bags to we're going to come up make a quick discussion with them and then we'll continue on with the salvage so now that we've completed our inspection dive we're actually going to go down and go ahead and start the rigging process now anytime you do something like this you want to make sure you take your time and you pick the best spots to rig with we're going to rig several lifting devices on the front of the vessel uh, quite a few <laughs> lifting devices in the midship area and then most of the heavy lifting uh, systems that we use they're going to be actually towards the stern which is the heaviest part of that vessel i.e. you got the engine back there and so we need to most lift there so what we're going to do here is we're attempting to take anchor shackles towards the bow eye uh, to give us a good attachment point unfortunately none of these will fit the bolts of the shackles part there you'll see they're all too big so we're going to have to kind of jerry rig the front of it here and we're going to use life safety rope for that what we're going to do is basically pull it through until we have a loop on one end and then I'll kind of measure up just do a quick little measuring up and I'll tie secondary loop off and that's going to either give me two loops to attach to a single bag or I can separate the loops out and have two different attachment points for this one uh, singular point here at the bow of the vessel so as we put the rope through we're going to thread it all the way through until the um, first loop is actually seen you'll see it here in just a second on camera 
the other divers kind of getting everything positioned here for me but as I pull it on through you'll see a loop kind of pops up and then I can fold and create a bite in the line and create a secondary attachment point and it's kind of important we see a lot of divers try to put just one bag on a bow or one bag on the say the stern drive or something like that and yeah it's going to lift the vessel but what it's also going to do is create a pivot point and you can actually have a vessel roll over even though it's at the surface and you've got it flowing or floating you can actually have it roll over so I'm just going to create a secondary loop here and that way I'll have two loops uh, or two different attachment points anytime you do knots and stuff like that you want to make sure that you dress them out appropriately and that everything's nice and secure so there I have two loops and I'm gonna go ahead and move on back to midship area and we're gonna go ahead and place our first belly band now what belly bands are they are basically glorified hammock straps or heavy-duty hammock straps if you've ever went hammocking then you'll know what that is you take a hammock strap wrap it around a tree create a girth hitch and then you have individual loops that you can um, clip off your hammock to. Well, basically that's what our belly band straps are as well and what they do is they create a cradle system uh, in conjunction with the lift bags that we use. So to hold this belly band in place we're simply just running a, a heavy duty ratchet strap over the top of the vessel that will attach to both sides of the uh, belly band and then we can ratchet it down to where it's nice and secure and it doesn't move now when you do this you want to make sure you pick a good flat spot on the vessel a place where it's not going to run off um, if you try to put a belly band say on the bow of a vessel where it's kind of rounded up then what can happen is, is as the bags start to inflate they can actually just pop right off the boat so what we're doing is we're actually going through the railing here on the side of the gunnels and then we're going to go up over the superstructure itself and kind of lock it into place to where it can't go nowhere but once we have this attached, we're going to make sure there's no twist in the line. We're going to get just take our time and make sure we get a good secure attachment points for our bags. Now another thing that I want to talk about is the actual placement of our lift bags. Once we start clipping these off, we're going to actually put them in the lowest point possible and that's what creates a vessel. So anytime you do search and recovery or salvage work, you have what's called Archimedes Principle that you've got to learn to manipulate. And the way Archimedes Principle works. Anytime you place something in the water, it's automatically going to be lifted up or buoyed up by the equal amount of weight that the object displaces in water. So you want to make sure that you get these bags as low as possible because as you lift this device up, it actually becomes heavier as it comes out of the water. And if you've got your lifting devices, in this case these subsalve bags, if you have them too high, then what can happen is, is you lose the lift once they surface. So the boat may be halfway up, but if your bags are halfway out of the water, now you've lost half the lifting capacity of the bag. So these bags range anywhere from 1,000 pounds. Uh, Subsalve makes them all the way up to say 70,000 pounds. The ones we're using uh, for this job are 1,000s, 2,000s, 4,000s, and 6,000 pound bags. And so we're going to kind of disperse those um, lifting capabilities equally across the um, the vessel itself. Obviously we've got to have more lift towards the stern of the vessel because it's actually heavier back there. You have the engines and the motors and things like that. So we're going to put more of the lift towards the aft end of it and then a little bit of the less lift towards the front. Now the, what we're going to do on the front once again to prevent any type of um, twisting motion or pivoting motion we're actually going to put multiple bags up front and separate it. So we'll have a 2000 on say uh, the front starboard, we'll have a 2000 on the front port side and then we'll have two 1000s there in the middle just to kind of flatten it out and keep everything nice and balanced. As we move back uh, towards midship area we're going to attach with one belly band system we're actually going to attach um, two of the four thousands and then directly behind that we're going to have two of the six thousand pound lifts and then on the back of the vessel we're going to have several more four thousands as well so we'll have the majority of the lift in the back of the vessel and then everything else is going to be evenly dispersed all the way up front and like I said as we come towards the bow of the vessel uh, we don't need that much lift just because there's not that much weight there but even here you can see we're having a little difficulty attaching the anchor shackles and all we're attaching to here is actually the uh, cleat that's kind of there on the um, say the the forward or the uh, bow area of the boat this part is not really meant to provide us with a lot of lift all we're trying to do is help stabilize the vessel and, and that's part of these 
bag's job as well. We've got some that's here for lift. You can actually see one. If you look underneath my right arm there, you'll see we've got one bag that's already pushed up underneath the vessel, connected to a belly band. What we're doing now is attaching one to the cleat here just for stabilization um, because we don't want it to shift. Once we start this lifting, we don't want it to shift. Now, once we do start lifting, there's several ways to do it. We can actually attach uh, our air tanks, our scuba tanks, to the bags directly and we can manipulate it underwater. But in this case, we're going to let all the um, all the controls uh, be conducted from the surface from the CETO team. So now all that's there, we're going to go ahead and start the uh, lifting phase here. You can see one of the bags is already starting to get inflated, but they have a manifold system up top that they can actually control just how fast uh, we do the lift here. Um, we are going to get to a stopping point here briefly just because this job ended up taking more than just one day to do and we did come across several issues where parts of the vessel were starting to break off because of the lifting devices putting too much uh, force on it. So like I said, if this is something that you're wanting to do, please get proper training with it and make sure you're using the proper equipment. It doesn't take much force at all to damage something. Our job obviously is to salvage this and get it out of the lake and get all the hazmat out, but our job is also to protect the client's vessel the best we can. So anytime we do salvage, there's inevitably going to be some damage done, but we want to take every precaution that we can to make sure that we're doing the best job that we can uh, so that we're not damaging anything. But now that we've got everything uh, pre-attached, we're going to go ahead and start with the lifting phase and uh, see just how stable we can get this vessel. But we, like I said, we are coming to a stopping point here. So this is actually a good chance for uh, our sponsor of today to give us a little ad here. Floating frames, clearer than glass, light as a feather, and tough as a rock. Rios Nautical Eyewear. Made here in the United States, these shades are outfitted with the latest innovation in sunglass technology. The lenses are clearer than glass and light enough to be the most comfortable shades to ever grace your face. Oh, and did we mention they float? Yeah, that's right, they float. If you're going to be around the water, Rios Nautical Eyewear is going to be the choice for you. Simply click the link below and pick out a pair today. We promise you, you will not be disappointed. Alright guys, so we're officially on day number two of this salvage and the issue that we are having is our straps keep breaking. Now we use a company called Subsal for all our lift bags and all our straps and CETO does as well. Well, we had some malfunctions with our Subsal straps yesterday and the threading, if you've ever seen what's called a belly band strap, which is used for salvage work or lifting uh, work, the loops that are on the straps. It's very similar to a hammock strap. So you hang your girth inch around a tree with your hammock strap and you got multiple loops where you can clip your hammock off. Well, we've had the same issues with these where the loops have actually broke free. Um, and they're supposed to withstand an extremely high amount of force being pulled up and they're not. The straps themselves are not breaking, but the threading where the loops are sewed on are coming apart. So we're definitely going to have to get those sent back. But the guys from CETO have went out to go get us some more straps and more lift. And hopefully we can get this thing moved. Now, yesterday we were able to get the vessel up to the surface and moved over to a shallower area where it's a little bit easier for us to work. What we're going to do today is we've got everything still pre-attached to it. We've got the manifold system on it. We're just going to hook the manifold to the compressor, crank up the bags, blow them up, lift it just up off the bottom to where we can put, say, an additional five to six thousand pounds of lift just to get that boat out of the water or get the gunnels of the boat just out of the water so that we can begin the pump and process. Once we do that, it's a very simple process of hooking it to another boat, towing it over to the access or to the landing, putting it on a trailer and getting it out of there. Um, we do have a pretty good idea of what made this sink. We're not gonna say it quite yet till we get it out of the water, but uh, we, we're pretty certain we know exactly what made this boat sink. But with that being said, I'm headed to the shop now. I'm gonna meet up with the other guys and we're gonna get right back at it. All right, so now we're getting very, very close to getting this boat floating. And as you can see how we evenly disperse the bags there, you can see two 2000s with the two single 1000s in between it. Everything else is up underneath the vessel and we're gonna go ahead and get it raised up to the surface. Um, you can see the subsalve, or I'm sorry, the sea tow team up on top of the dock there and they are running the manifolds 
and getting everything exactly where it needs to be uh, and we're just slowly bringing it up we're trying not to lose as much debris uh, we're trying to keep everything in a boat and you can see it starting to list a little bit so they're going to put a little bit more lift on say the port side than the, than the starboard and it's going to go ahead and lift it up to the surface um, but as it comes up our goal is to get that vessel up above the gunnels as soon as the water gets just below the gunnels then what we can do is go ahead and start the pumping process so we'll put a couple of guys inside with pumps they can shove them down in those access panels that we were talking about earlier and we can start pumping as you can see here the boat is completely up and we are still pumping water out of it um, you can see the lines you can see our straps going across the top there you can see the manifold up top that way we can kind of control it as we're up top if it lists one way or the other we can add more air but you can see water's down below the gunnels it's pumping water out all that's left of course is to uh, hook it to a boat we're going to use our two center consoles one to pull with and one to steer with and then we're going to get around to the ramp and pull it out of the water all right guys so after two very long days we were actually able to salvage the boat and let me show you what it looks like this is currently the 43 foot houseboat that we've been trying to lift for two days we finally got it out of the water um, got it pumped out and we found out exactly what made it sink and i'm going to show you that now if you come over here you're going to see these big scuff marks the problem is these are not scuff marks that's indented in we've got another little mark over here where it's indented in it's about the size of a basketball as well you can see where the frame up here is cracked as well and if we come back over to this section you'll notice there's a tiny little hole here about the size of a little pea there and even up under it there's a hole here and a hole here and in short a pontoon or some other type of vessel has rammed this houseboat and that's what made it go in water went in boat went down simple as that because i hope you enjoyed this video um i want to thank our sponsor again rios nautical eyewear rios is the industry's leader in floating sunglasses i've tried these things in the lake in the ocean they simply do not sink and if you're going to be around water where things can sink you want to make sure that your glasses don't so definitely a big shout out to rios thanks for the sponsorship and i also want to thank Cito once again we couldn't have done this job without Cito. yeah we do salvage work all the time but our lift capacity is not as much as what people think and we have to partner sometimes with Cito. Cito brings out the rigging and all the lift and of course we do all the hard work underwater so with that being said thanks to Cito again we look forward to working with you again in the future but as always guys if you like this video give me a big thumbs up definitely share it as well if you got any questions on salvage work search and recovery work things like that put it down in the comment section below and we'll try to answer it the best we can but as always make sure you follow us on instagram and twitter like like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always guys, we appreciate your business.